Thank you. I have an important question. Has anyone out there ever felt like they didn't belong? Almost everybody's raising their hands. I have another important question. Has anyone out there ever made someone else feel like they didn't belong? I certainly have, and I'll start there. I was at a sales conference once. It was a sales conference, there were about 300 people in the room. I'm one of about 10 women. I'm one of two African-Americans, and I'm the only African-American woman in the room. And the topic of conversation that day just happened to be diversity. <laughs> so I remembered sitting in the front row, and I remembered steam coming out of my ears <laughs> because I'm sitting there looking at this typical white male executive talk about diversity. And I sat there thinking, you are going to talk to me about diversity? No, that's not going to happen. <laughs> so as I was sitting there, I couldn't receive this person's message. I mean, as a matter of fact, today I have no idea what that conversation was even about. But I do know that I couldn't receive his message, and I'm a really curious person. So during a break, I walked up and I said, Mike, you know what? I really can't receive your message. And he said, why not? And I said, because of what you look like. And he said, I'm gay. And it was the first time that unconscious bias really hit me upside the head. But I really didn't understand the impact of that story until I got home later that evening. I was sitting down, I was about to take my first bite of food, and I burst into tears. Because what I realized is what I had done to Mike, people had been doing to me my entire life. They had been judging me simply by what I looked like. And I, in turn, had started to do that to other people. It was that day that I said I would never make another person feel undervalued for who they were simply because of what they look like. And I share that story with you because it's what drives me around this topic of belonging. And it's actually what spurred me to start to think about the importance of why the notion of belonging really mattered to people. So I want to talk a little bit about that. So a few years ago, and by the way, I've been doing diversity work for a really long time, about 15, 20 years. And a few years ago, there was a new topic that was, or a new term that was actually introduced into the diversity arena. And it was this term called belonging. And I was super excited because I felt that as we were talking about inclusion and diversity, there was something that was missing. And for me, it was belonging. And now I finally knew exactly what it was. And so I wanted to go and find the secret sauce of belonging because what I thought, because I wanted to solve problems for the world, and I thought that if I could solve for belonging for all people and find that secret sauce, I could help to transform corporations and workplaces and cultures, and I could ensure that every single person in the workplace had a really positive employee experience. I was so excited about this word belonging, I created a whole structure around it. It's called VIBE, Value, Inclusion, Belonging, and Equity for All. That's a talk for another day. And so as I sought to actually um, find this common definition of belonging, I thought if I can just solve for belonging for the entire world, I'll kind of have that secret, secret sauce, I'll bottle it up, maybe make some t-shirts, maybe some cool tennis shoes or mugs or something, maybe make a couple do dollars. Um, and so I went on the search to find the common definition, a common definition that could apply for everybody around the world. Didn't matter what your race was, your gender, your physical ability, your sexual orientation, whether or not you were an immigrant. It really didn't matter. This thing called belonging was going to be the best thing for everybody. So as I searched for this common definition, I will admit that was my first big mistake. Let me tell you some lessons that I learned as I was going along this journey of belonging, and I was trying to discover this for myself. The first thing is that there are five basic conditions that must be in place for just about each and every one of us to feel like we belong. There are five things that I feel must be in place for me, and I'll share those five things in a few minutes. The second thing that I learned, and it was a huge mistake, and that was trying to define belonging in a single way for all people. I couldn't do that because belonging means different things to different people. What makes me feel like I belong doesn't necessarily make you or you or you feel like you belong. 
Belonging is different for each and every one of us. So some things that make me feel like I belong, one of those things is I can walk into work one day sporting my braids, and I can walk in the next day with my natural hair, and people not look at me like I'm an alien, because <laughs> that's actually happened before. Or people gloss over me because they're afraid to say something because I've changed my appearance a little bit, right? But when I can come in and do that, that makes me feel like I can belong. Or when I go into an executive meeting and I roll up my sleeves because it's a hot day and I want to show off my tattoo. I don't want to be judged for my tattoo because my tattoo is special to me. It means something really important to me. And I don't want to hide that part of me. Another thing that could make me feel like I belong is if I walk into work after a traumatic event has happened within my community and one of my workmates leans in and says, hey, how are you today? That makes me feel like I belong. Now, those might not be the things that make you feel like you belong, but one of the important things that I also found was that belonging is a two-way street. And what I mean by that is we have to understand our own sense of belonging. Belonging isn't something that we can sit back and have something done to us. We must participate, and in order to do that, you must know who you are as an individual in order to feel, in, or, in order for you to be able to articulate what makes you have a sense of belonging. Those conditions, those five conditions that I talked about, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, those must be in place, and that must be what other people do, but you must also lean in and be able to tell people what it's going to take for you to feel like you belong. Because as I said, it's different for every one of us. The other thing that I discovered about belonging is that when those five conditions are in place and I still don't feel like I belong, the power is in my hands. I am the decision maker around how I can actually turn the tables and ensure that I do feel like I belong. And I want to share some tools and tips for that as well. And then lastly, and this is the most important thing, and this is what my talk is all about, and that is if you want people to thrive, create the conditions for belonging. These are the five tenets or conditions that I talked about. The first one is psychological safety. Psychological safety must be in place because that, that's what drives that sense of trust for us in the workplace or in the communities that we are in or at our church or at our synagogue or even on a team that we are on. That psychological safety, that place where I can actually share how I'm feeling regardless of how I'm feeling. The environment is such that people are going to welcome how I'm feeling, whether or not it's good or bad. They're willing to listen to the experiences that I have, and they're willing to, they're willing to lean in to understanding those experiences as well. Psychological safety must be in place. The second thing is empathy. If we haven't learned anything over the last couple of years, it is that empathy and care and compassion needs to stand tall when we are leading other people and when we are engaging with other people. We've got to go back to that sense of care about one another. And in some cases, we've actually lost our place there. But empathy, that care, that compassion has to be in place for most of us as well. Acceptance is the next thing. We need to be accepted for our, for our authentic selves. And I use our authentic selves and our authentic best selves for a reason. Not our authentic whole selves, because there is a thing about bringing our whole self to work, right? There are parts of me that should be kept in the closet that we actually don't want to come out. And when Karen wants to be me, nasty Karen Taylor on a Monday, my colleagues shouldn't have to deal with that. That person gets to stay at home. But my authentic best self, that's the person that we want to show up every single day because that's the person who's gonna, who's gonna help us thrive in the workplace as well. The next one is about connection. And connection is about a couple of things. It's about being connected to the people. It's about being connected to a bigger purpose. But for me, this connection was even more so about feeling wanted. People wanted me to be in that room. That is an important element of belonging for me, to feel that connection with other people regardless of how I am feeling that particular day. That need for connection in all of us is something that is prevalent when you are building a culture of belonging. And then lastly, 
the notion of feeling embraced, and some people think embraced, hmm, but think about this. Think about what it feels like when you get that big, warm, warm embrace from someone that really loves you. You feel valued. You feel respected. You feel appreciated. And that's critical when it comes to belonging. So these things are really important for just about any single person to feel like they belong. But the important thing is, when these things are at play, this is when your energy level rises. This is when you lean in at the table. This is when your creativity and your innovation thrives. This is when you want to be at the table and people want to hear your voice because it's infectious the way that you're showing up. Okay? That's what that feeling of belonging is all about. Because when these things are not in place, you can't have a feeling of belonging. When psychological safety is not in place, psychological harm is. And when psychological harm is at place, emotional and mental trauma is actually playing out as well. No one can thrive or feel like they belong when they're being traumatized, right? Similarly, if you feel disconnected, how can you actually feel like you can thrive or like you can belong if you feel disconnected from people and purpose, right? If you're not appreciated and respected for your contributions as a person and as an individual, how are you going to feel like you belong? So as long as these things are in place, we all have an opportunity to feel like we belong because when the opposite is in place, that's when we sit back. That's when our voices are not being heard. That's when we feel we're not a part of the system. I don't know about any of you, but that certainly isn't a place that I can live for a very long time. And imagine that you're actually the only one. You're the only black person, you're the only woman, you're the only man, you're the only white person, the only person with a disability, it doesn't matter. Because when you're the only one, now you actually are feeling isolated. And you have no one that you can actually reach out to and talk to because that safe environment, that psychological safety, peace is not at play. And that is not an environment that people want to stay or can thrive in. All sounds doom and gloom, but I promise it's not. Because what I also believe is that you can actually change status quo. When, you, when those five tenets, that peace is in play for you, and, you are, and you're feeling psychological, psychologically safe, you can actually change the status quo if you're feeling like you're not belonging. Because imagine that you're sitting around a room, and imagine that there's one seat left at the table. And you go and you sit there, and let's say that the two people standing next to you, sitting next to you, greet you and they say hello, welcome to the meeting, how are you doing, they want to hear your voice, you're in a place where you can thrive, your energy is high. Now imagine that you walk into the room, it's that same room, that same one seat is left, but this time, no one says anything to you. No one says hello, no one introduces himself, no one cares about your opinion in the meeting. Okay? That's a very different feeling. That's a place where people can't thrive. But if that's at play, you can actually change status quo, and here's why. If those five things are in play, you can introduce yourself to the people next to you. You can lean in and you can say, I want to hear your voice a little bit more. You can change your attitude, and when you change, the system around you is going to change as well. When you act differently, if you are more positive, that will be infectious to people and they will be more positive around you. So you actually can change the outcomes if, of your own belonging if peace is at play. So I want to give you a few things to think about as we close this day. Over the last few years, we've lost our sense of humanity our sense of connection, our sense of caring for one another, our sense of coming together and making this a greater world for all people, ensuring that there is inclusion, belonging, and equity for all of us. It doesn't take much. And so I leave you with this one question. What are you going to do 
to ensure that you are creating the conditions of belonging in the circles that you run in. Because I guarantee you, when you do create that sense of belonging, it allows people that opportunity to thrive. It allows people to do what they do best. And I guarantee you that if you want people to thrive, create that sense of belonging, and then sit back, relax, and watch people soar. <laughs>